What's up, family? Peace and blessings, peace and blessings. I'm laughing right now because I've been trying so hard to get this glare out of the way, but it's there, whatever, right? So anyways, how to discover your spiritual gifts. These are signs to look for. This video is very important because your spiritual gifts, like God blesses you, is not for yourself. It's actually for to edify the body of Christ, to get people to uh, lead to salvation through Jesus Christ, get people to, to repent, things of that sort, right? So spiritual gifts, let's get it, let's go, man. If you like the video, like, share, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Number one is you have a burning desire to love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, guys. This is this is the key. That's and that's why Jesus says this is the greatest commandment. Okay, when you have a spiritual, when you have so many spiritual gifts, guys, this is the number one thing that all centers around it. You love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. And what did Jesus tell Peter? He told Peter, "If you love me, feed my sheep." Okay, so it's action. God is looking for when you say you love God, He's looking for action. Okay. When Jesus could have said, could have told Peter, uh, say you, if you love me, just say you love me. You know, but he said, if you love me, feed my sheep. So he wants you, he wants you to show love through action. So this is a sign of spiritual gifts, guys. You love God with actions. And you don't think God's not going to bless you with gifts? Just like how the devil, the devil blesses people with gifts too. Uh, his people. And God also blesses people with his gifts. The Bible talks about this. Jesus talked about this in the parable God gave man talents, five talents, two talents, and one talent. The person who had one talent was lazy and slothful and didn't put the talent, the gifts that God blessed them to use. The one who had two talents, even though it wasn't five, he put it to use and he was used to, you know, feed the sheep, lead people to salvation, things like that. And also number five, too, as well. Much is given, much is required. So when you're getting these spiritual gifts from God, best believe he's to require a new version of you. He should require you to be on a higher level, higher frequency, a life that you're not living in willful sin, not being disobedient. Woo! And understand this too. New levels, new devils, bro. They're coming. <laughs> they're coming, bro. They're coming. And let them come. Let them come. Because what God's for you, nobody could be against you. When you're getting these spiritual gifts, guys, when you're getting enlightened about this stuff, I'm speaking through testimony. When you're getting enlightened by this stuff in the beginning stages, you know, even even when you already have the spiritual gift, you're just a babe at it. You know, you're just you're you're, you're still practicing. It's like how someone gets the NBA. He's a rookie. He's you know he's ten years from now. He's gonna be much better. He's gonna be experienced. Okay, this is how how it is with spiritual gifts, especially when it comes to discernment. Just a couple months ago, I thought my discernment was sharp. I thought my discernment was on point. Looking back, bro, my discernment was it was still still little little. little. Now my discernment is like this. It's all levels to it. So when I'm talking about a level up, guys, I'm not talking about just physically. You know, even though, yes, you can level up physically, but when I'm talking about level up spiritually, your discernment is, is next level. Your wisdom is next level. Your knowledge is next level. It's just your, your Holy Spirit is just next level. That's what it's all about, man. So understand that, man. The gifts that God blesses with you, you better put it to use because he'll take it away. Everything God will give, he gives to you, if you don't put that to use, he's, he's taking it away and he's giving it to somebody else. So don't be in love with this world, bro. This world has this world don't love you anyways. I'm gonna speak about that in a little bit. Okay, so that's number one, man. Okay, you gotta be willing to die for Christ, bro. Like if Christ if was on this earth today, and you know how the Romans and, and, and those the Israelites, everybody pretty much was crucified, and everybody, you know, you know, I'm pretty sure there's always there's always a few that didn't that didn't, but for the most part, majority of people were saying, crucify him, crucify him, right? I'd be there. I'd be like, bro, I'd be trying to fight those people. All those people who'd be saying crucify him, bro, I'd, I'm telling you, bro, I'm willing to die, man. Because this world ain't real. These people ain't real. I don't want to be with these people, bro. I want to be with the kingdom. Not in a depressing way, but like, I want to be with Jesus. That's what I'm So I, I'm, I'm, I'm built for this, bro. I'm built for this. And some of y'all watching are built for this too, man. But you got to be willing to die for this, man. Straight up. That's number one. Number two, whoa, let's go, bro, let's go. Number two, say it his demons. Because this is the signs you have to give, guys. I'm telling you, bro, I'm telling you, man. Say it his demons have been targeting you since a child, bro. I'm stupid, since a child. They've been monitoring you. This is why I talk about monitoring spirits. They're watching. Oh, yeah, let them watch. <laughs> let them watch. Okay, when I was a child, Man, guys, there's a lot of stories I could talk about. Y'all would call me crazy. Y'all be like, oh, this guy needs to be in a mental hospital. This guy needs to be on meds, man. That's why I keep things to myself. You know, certain things you got to keep things to yourself. But I'm telling you guys, when I was a young child, I'm talking about when I was like five, six, seven, eight, I would see demonic spirits. I'm telling you, bro. I would see that in the spirit room. And I'll tell you why I would see them. Okay. And nothing against my, my, my mom and dad. Love them. Love them. Best dad ever. Best mom ever. Right. 
when my parents got divorced, for those who don't know, when you, when you get divorced and you have children, spiritual laws can affect. Sayings are gonna mess up you, the husband, the wife, and the children too, okay? Um, so when it, I don't wanna get off topic, when it comes to marriage, bro, that's for life, really guys, especially if you have children. I guess if you don't have children, it is what it is. Even though I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I'm just saying, but when you have children, bro, and you get a divorce, Satan's gonna attack the children. I'm living proof. I never got a divorce, you know, obviously, but you know, my, I saw it with my parents, right? And I'm telling you, Satan was attacking me, bro. He was attacking me heavy, bro. Heavy spiritual laws. He gets access to, to attack, right? When he get a divorce. And I'm telling you, bro, there's a lot of stuff I would see, bro. Like as a young child, man, and I would try to tell people and they would think they wouldn't, they wouldn't know, you know? But looking back, I know what I will see. I know, bro. Satan, the Bible says that God chosen you from the womb. So you don't think the devil and these demons and the spiritual realm don't know this? They know this. They see the light on you. You have a certain light on you, bro. A certain spirit that other people don't possess. And they see it. The, 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 you don't, guys, I'm telling you, bro. I've reached over 100 million people through this YouTube stuff. Probably more in other apps. You don't think the devil didn't know I would reach this much people to tell people to repent of your sins, to tell people to give your life to Jesus before it's too late? You don't think the devil didn't know a hundred million people? That's a lot of people, guys. That's a lot. The devil didn't want me to do this. That's why he tried, bro. He tried so hard. That's why I told you guys when the devil, when the devil's, you know, in your face, try to scare you, try to monitor you, or try to, you know, throw you off the course, look him in the eyes and tell him, bring it on. Bring it on. But understand when you say that, spiritual warfare is to take place. He's going to attack. That's why God says to put on the armor of God. So you have nothing to worry about. You're protected. You're a warrior for God. When you have the spiritual gifts, you're a warrior. You're in the kingdom of God. Woo! Okay. And, you know, nothing Nothing that you, that, I think that's worth is easy. Even denying yourself, picking up your cross, that's not easy to do. If that was easy, then everybody would be doing it. Okay. So understand this. When it comes to discovering your spiritual gifts and knowing that you have it, look at your life. Analyze was Satan attacking you in your youth, in your, in your childhood? Did you see certain things in the spiritual realm take place in your in the childhood? That That's the gift, man. Not many people experience that, man. Not many people experience that. And honestly, I'm just going to be honest. The things that I would see, I wouldn't wish anybody to see that type of stuff that I would see in the spiritual realm, guys. I'm telling you, bro. Like, it would have me so... Man, he messed me up when I was a child, bro. I'm, I'll just say that. You know, but like I said... Certain spiritual laws are in fact, parents getting divorced, you know, boom. Okay, so that's number two. Saying the demons, they've been targeting you since a child. I guess I guys bring it on. To the demons that try to attack, bring it on, bro. I'm with God. Who are you? Who are you? God's with me. Who should I fear? Number three, you don't care what people think about broadcasting your faith or sharing truth. A lot of people on my walk, bro, it's been almost seven years on my walk, right? And I would see a lot of people, they're scared to show their faith. They're, they're scared to post a Bible verse on their social media, the, the post that they love God, they love Jesus on their social media because they know what it comes with. They know that the world don't like that and they want to fit in with the world so bad. God can't use people who try to fit in with this world because the world is the enemy of God. And if you're of this world, you're now God's enemy. If you're friends of this world, you're an enemy of God. Okay, so always understand that when it comes to spiritual gifts, you can't be with the world, bro. You got to be born again and you got to be crucified with Christ, man. A lot of people, they're not, they're not willing to do this, bro. They're not willing to die for Christ. They're not willing to do that. They're not, they're not, they're not willing to, you know, take what, what it comes with. And, they, and people know deep down, especially if you call yourself a Christian or a Hebrew, whatever, right? A Bible believer. You know deep down what it comes with. You know that you're going to lose pretty much everything, you know? You know, pretty much. I can say everything, but you know, for the most part, right? And people ain't ready for that. They ain't trying to lose their status. They ain't trying to, to lose their clout, what they got. This well, all vanity. It don't mean nothing, bro. Their money, maybe the things that they gain in Satan's kingdom, maybe the, their viewership, whatever, bro. They ain't ready to lose that. So, you know, they just want to stay spiritually, you know, dead, pretty much. Okay, so don't be afraid to broadcast your faith. Remember, the Bible says in Mark, Mark chapter, 30, uh, chapter 8, verse 30, and my spelling is bad, so it is what it is. But it, Jesus says that anybody who's ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous, sinful generation, him I will also be ashamed when he comes back. So if you're ashamed to share your, to broadcast your faith, to share your faith, then Jesus himself, when he comes back, he's going to be ashamed of you. He's going to be ashamed. I don't, want, I don't want him to come back and be ashamed of me. 
You know, I, I'm not, you know, when you have a spiritual gift, bro, you don't care what people think. You don't care what people think about it. They can talk. Let them talk. Let them talk. You're always going to have spectators. You're always going to have people who, who, who just have something negative to say, but they always watch you. They always, you know, watching your every move. You know, even Jesus, the man without sin, they had so much to say about him. We're not without sin. You know, I'm not. You know, but even then, this is like, people just, you got to say, that's what I said, the demons, they targeting, they watching, they watching, man, I'm telling you. But yeah, don't be afraid to broadcast your faith. Don't be in love with this world, bro. You got to be ready to give it up. I'm willing, I'm willing to die for Christ, bro. I'm willing. Let's go. Let's go. Woo! You got to be fired up, man. Got to be fired up. That's number three. Number four. Okay, now, I put family members, but I'm going I'm to read this part first, all right, before I go with the family members. It says, other members, remember I said in the beginning, when, it, when God gives you those spiritual gifts, it's used to edify the body of Christ, right? So, other members who, you know, other members as in those in the body of Christ will prophesy into you. They'll tell you, okay? This is what the body's all about. It's iron sharpening, iron. This is what this video is about too. Hopefully, hopefully, I'm planning to see in those, you know, iron sharpening iron, okay? So God will use other members of the body to, to show you, to tell you. If you're relating with that, what I'm saying in this video, if you, you see these signs, now, these are just... I'm only going over five signs. You can have many signs that I, that's not on the whiteboard. You can have many other signs that I have not listed. So I'm not just saying this is only it, you know? I got to say that. But um, I remember I was in the church. I'll never forget this day. It was in Oakland, 2016, 15, 16, I don't know, somewhere around that time. 2016, 2017. And um, I, I was, I, I don't, I didn't really, really go to church. My mom was forcing me to go to ch church that day. She was like, you have to go. I was like, all right, whatever. And um, it was like a five hour long service, bro. It was Habasha Church, for those who don't know, um, East African um, Eritrean Church, right? And you know, a lot of churches I would go to prior to that, like I never really felt the spirit. I never really felt like this is like, you know, the man of the Lord or, you know, I never felt that the church that I went before, but this church I went to, bro, and they didn't speak English. It was, um, they were speaking Tigrinya or um, yeah, it was a um, Eritrean language, African language, right? And I don't even I don't even speak that language. My mom does, but I don't I don't I don't understand language or whatever. But I just in in that church I just felt a presence there, bro. Like I, even this is when I was in the world, guys. Before I was in the truth, I didn't know anything. Okay, when in terms of in spiritual stuff, but I just felt something in that church. And the pastor he was prophesizing over um, people. He was putting laying their hands on. Um, I, guys, make sure you read the Bible verses. I'll leave on the screen too. But he was putting hands on people. And I didn't even want to go. My mom was like, no, you have to go. She was forcing me to go. My mom was begging me to go. I was like, all right, whatever. He comes to me, or I, I'm sorry, I go to him. He lays his hands on me and he, he speaks the language. I don't know. I, I didn't know what he, what he was saying, but I went back and I, I remember as he was laying hands on people, people would be like, kind of like scared and stuff like that or, I, or something like that. Right. I asked my mom, I was like, what, what did you say? Mom, I was just curious. She was like, oh, you know, you have a special calling from God in your life. And I was like, what? You know, I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, like, I didn't really think too too deep of it, you know? Like, guys, I can't make this up. And there's a Bible verse that shows this. I'll, hopefully, I don't forget to put that. I'll leave the Bible verse all throughout the screen. Um, just since the, the Leshians, um probably saying that, word, that's like that chapter wrong. But um, I'll never forget that. I just saw it throw it out there. But yeah, you also have family members. My, my grandma, bro. My grandma would always be in her Bible. She would always tell me, you know, Mark, you, got, you have a calling from God in your life, too. And I was young. And like I said, I, I didn't have a spiritual mind at the time, so I didn't really understand it. You know, I was more carnal at the time. So, but looking back, I'm like, dang, like God definitely used people to show me, but it's only up to you to really, to, to, for you to seek out him. You know, um, you got to put in the work. You got to, you know, your faith is, your faith is, your true faith, even if it's a mustard seed, it's going to eventually produce works. All right. So that's number four. Number five, move this back a little bit so y'all can see better. All right. Number five is... God shows you in a vision or in a dream, okay? I'll read this in the book of Job, uh, chapter 33, verse 15 to 17. I'll leave the verse somewhere up here so y'all can read along. Uh, God speaks, man. God's always showing you in a dream or in a vision, okay? But man, they don't perceive it not, all right? And he, he wants to show you, you know, all you people who are watching this video, man or woman, what's your purpose is, what he wants you to do. But a lot of people, pride, pride of life, the vanity... Uh, maybe they just don't have number one. They don't have the love for God, so they just kind of you know and push it away, and they become like that slothful servant who God casts away in the lake of fire. 
Okay, and um, yeah, and I also put down here in the bottom, I put wisdom, hopefully y'all can see. Okay, yeah, wisdom is discipline. I just put that right there. I'll just say that to you guys. There you go, all right. Wisdom, true wisdom is discipline. And to be a disciple of Christ, you gotta have discipline. Okay, discipline is self-control. Uh, discipline is, you know, you you being you being the fruits of the spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. You truly not having discipline, man. That's what's going to produce. All right. So wisdom. That's what it's all about, guys. That's what it's all about. Remember, wisdom. The Bible speaks about that in the Book of Corinthians, chapter twelve. That that's a spiritual gift. Okay, knowledge, spiritual gift, prophecy, uh, speaking in tongues. Now, the speaking in tongues y'all see in these churches. The, like you know, da, 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 like that's not that's not speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. The origin of the Bible it was talking about when people would speak a different language. Like, let's say someone would go to like China and speak Chinese, and even though he didn't speak Chinese, but he would have the the, the gift of speaking in tongues for him to to speak in that language, and then it would be an interpreter for them to you know, for them to you know for that. So it goes hand in hand. So uh, but yeah, I don't want to get off topic, but yeah, this is the video, guys. How to discover your spiritual gifts, signs to look for, man. I hope this video blessed someone out there. Plan this season, somebody, because that's what it's all about, man. If you guys made this far, like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.